way they look and the way they believe. I'm not against this. I fight for this and preserve this with my life. I won't call you, brother, no hypocrite. I won't call you no false man. I never have said that. No, no, no. I have said to Brother Muhammad what I disagreed with him on. And my... That's all right. It did fall, but it's going to be lifted up again, and those that's going to lift him up are right in this room. <laughs> Beloved, I, I just beg you to reason with me. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's life is, is so profound and so unique that he touched Abraham, he touched Noah, he touched Lot. Do you remember when Abraham Sarah was barren, couldn't produce a child for Abraham? Abraham went into his handmaiden, right? or her handmaiden, Hagar. And Hagar gave Abraham his first child. All of a sudden, Sarah causes Abraham to put that wife and that child out in the wilderness. Now, if you were a contemporary of Abraham, you might be tempted to misjudge him and say, look at that evil, wicked man throwing his wives or his wife out of the house after she gave him that beautiful child. But in the wilderness, when that woman was running with that little baby, looking to the hills for help, yet under her foot, the scripture says, was a bubbling well. That was to teach the wives Today of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that yes, you fulfilled that you were running in the wilderness, but when he wasn't caring for you, there was a God that was looking after you and your babies until the time came right that you could come home. He touched that scripture. Abraham, oh yeah, Abraham was a friend of God. Never was there a friend of God more friend than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Never was there a man more in the bosom of God than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. How can you prove it? Abraham never had what Elijah had to face. There was no prophet of the past that ever faced what the messenger had because the messenger, the last one, was seen in the midst of four beasts. And you know what a beast does to a lamb. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't walk a day. He didn't walk a month. He didn't walk a year. He walked 44 years in the midst of vicious beasts. And they shut their mouths at that man. He was in the bosom of God. Noah had some sons. And after Noah preached 120 years, one son... Well, the Bible says it a little different than the Holy Quran. The Bible says that his family got in the ark. And after the ark landed, sometime later, they said Noah got drunk. After the Noah was naked, under what the Bible calls drunkenness, he had three sons. One of them mocked the father's nakedness, according to the Bible. Two of the sons wouldn't look on their father's nakedness, but refused and covered him over. And Noah cursed that son. That was an ungrateful son. After the father got his nasty self out of the flood he turns and mocks 
his father's condition. The father's condition wasn't a trial for the father. The father's condition was a trial for his son. Because there was something hiding in the heart of that son that had to be made manifest. And only those kind of conditions could bring out of that ungrateful, wretched heart what lay hidden there. But we move on through. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, the Holy Quran says Noah had a son, and that son, hear me, beloved brothers and sisters, that son didn't believe in his father. When the father gave the command to get into the ark, the son said, no, I will betake myself to the mountain. Noah went out and pleaded to God for the life of his son because like any father, he loved his child. But what was God's answer according to the Holy Quran? He said, look, I know best who your son is. If you plead for him one more time, I'll drown you along with the rest of the unjust. He is not your son. He is the very embodiment of evil. That's the Holy Quran balanced with the Bible. The messenger touched the life of Musa in the cave, and he touched the life of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah because the messenger had hypocrites among his wives. Didn't he? Those of you who know, you know. And those of you who don't know, you come into the knowledge of it. But he touched the life of Noah. He touched the life of Lot. He touched the life of Abraham. He touched the life of Musa. Because Moses went up into the caves and hillsides of Europe to lift up a serpent. And the Bible says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. You need civilizing. And that's why in the lessons it says, why did Musa have a hard time to civilize the devil 2000 B.C.? But the question is not, why did Musa have a hard time civilizing the devil? The question is, why did God ask why? Because he knew that Elijah Muhammad would have a hell of a time trying to civilize you and me, while at the same time battling the most wicked, vicious enemy, that even the prophetic, symbolic picture of Pharaoh don't do no damn justice to. Pharaoh and Egypt don't do no justice to what the real Moses went through. I agree with you, brother. That picture of Moses don't show Pharaoh's sagacity. That picture of Moses don't show a man using mind-controlled drugs. That picture of Pharaoh don't show him so cunning he can suggest into your subconscious mind things that you don't even know are there and make you an enemy of your own self and an enemy of your own people. That, that biblical picture don't show that. It gives you a hint of it. So the messenger fulfilled Musa and he fulfilled the Moses. Brothers and sisters, I know it's late. And I, I really don't like to hold you so long. And but I will come to where I'm going if you just bear with me in a few minutes. Beloved brothers, sisters, if you trace the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's life and study the lives of the prophets in that man's 44 years, he fulfilled it all. 
brothers and sisters. As the Old Testament closes, it says, end of the prophets. And he 